to, you know, to be lifted up and be patted on the back. <laughs> Amen. No, but we're we're here to flow with you. We're here to just to move into the flowing of the Spirit of the Lord and and going along with what Brother Lockmiller said about the stars. Uh, that thought had crossed my mind earlier. Yes, sir. And, and you know, the Scripture says He made a greater light to rule the day and a lesser light to rule the night, and He made the stars also. And He made the stars to shine in the darkness. Amen. Amen. And you know, Paul says that the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Yes. Amen. So we're still shining. Amen. Amen. But there's a greater light. Amen. Can you say praise the, Lord? praise the Lord? There's a greater light that will come that will rule in the day of the Lord. Yes. Oh, glory. And I don't know about you, but I, I would not want to miss that for nothing in the world. You know, if you keep looking back on yesterday and what God did, or you keep thinking about what He's going to do in the future, we're going to miss out on today. We're going to miss out on what God has for you and I. Amen. So we need to keep looking unto Jesus. Amen. And Jesus says, let tomorrow take care of itself. Amen. Glory to God. And I know it's going to be glorious. Amen. But today, we're, we're searched the Scriptures. You know, we read the Scriptures all the time. We're constantly searching, not necessarily looking for a, a, a message or a, a sermon or anything like that, but I'm looking for a key. I search the scriptures to, I'm looking for a key or something that will help me out of my present distress <laughs> or what I'm going through right now. Yes. I mean, I'm looking for something that will just lift me up a little bit higher, give me enough courage, encouragement to continue on. Yes. Scripture says, he that endures unto the end shall be saved. <laughs> Amen. And, but you know what? We're like Jesus sometimes. The journey gets kind of weary. Seems like nobody's listening. Sometimes it seems like even your wife don't believe what you're saying. <laughs> yes. And you know, that's the, that's the problem with all of us. We've heard these things for so long. Because we've been saying for 2,000 years, the Lord is coming back. The Lord is coming. The, you know, and it's almost like nobody even believes it anymore. Amen. But He's coming and He's coming in His people. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. It's not so much as a coming as it is an appearance. Can you say praise the Lord? Yeah, praise the Lord. Okay, as we uh, turn into scriptures, um, the Lord, the Lord has been dealing with me. I have, you know, John says I have to tell you the things that I've seen, the things I heard, and the things I've experienced. And so the Lord's been dealing with me. Okay, um, so I'm going. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm over a church down in Bartow, and and um, we got some uh, pastors and stuff under us, and. And, and it seems like they're not where they're supposed to be all the time. <laughs> Amen. And so you think, why, did I, why do I do the things that I do? Seems like I do things that deliberately put more on me. Is that the way y'all are? Yeah. Seems like I, 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 people say, well, you need to you know, be like Moses. You need to share the anointing. You need to. Sometimes it's just better if I go ahead and do it. Amen. I know how I want it done. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I was over at a restaurant the other day, and this preacher, uh, in from the same town I'm in, he looked at me and he said something like, I don't remember exactly how I said it, but he implied that I was not Pentecostal anymore. <laughs> and even though there's some truth in that, because I think I've gone a little bit beyond Pentecost, but I'm standing there by his table, and I said, "You see this hair right up here? You see all that up there?" He said, "Yeah." I said, there's not a hair up there that's not Pentecostal. <laughs> if there was one hair up there that was not Pentecostal, I would pluck it out and throw it away. That's what I told him. I don't know where he got it. I'm probably more Pentecostal than they are. At least I speak in tongues every day. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at least I do something Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. I, I, don't, I can't even remember the last time I heard him doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. But people, people use opportunities like that to just jab at you. And, and it's, it's almost as if they already know that you're going through something and they just want to go ahead and cut you on down. And so I'm walking, I'm walking off from the table thinking, now, why would he even say such a statement as that? He hasn't seen me since the last time I saw him. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't, 
He doesn't come to my ministry. He doesn't fellowship us. Where, where, why would he make a statement like that? I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. If I wasn't, I would get filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but I, I'm constantly staying filled with the Holy Ghost. I know Hebrew says we have a tendency to let these things slip. The Greek said leak out. We let them leak out. They don't rush out and just pour out all at once. They leak out. We, we miss a church service. You know, we miss reading our Bible. We, you know, we just start letting these things slip. You know, and they, and they slip away from us. Sometimes you're going to have to go back and make some drastic changes. Yes. Let's go over. I think it's in Isaiah 44. <clears throat> don't, get, don't feel hard at me if I'm wrong. I know. I know how you are. <laughs> there you go. Well, I was wrong. It's in 45. <laughs> Amen. Well, but close don't count. The world's always looking at us, and we've got to walk the straight and narrow. They're on the Broadway. They're not even on the, the straight and narrow, but they expect us to stay on it. And if they ever hear that you didn't stay on it, <laughs> amen. Well, you know what, though? Is that bad that the, church, that the world expects the church to be on a higher level? Amen. To be better yes. than what they're seeing? Can, can, they, can they expect too much of us? I was thinking a while ago when we were worshiping. You know, God, you can feel the presence of the Lord. Can you worship too long? What if you spent the whole two or three hours? We have in the past. Yeah. Can you do it too much? And people say, yeah, but you need to move on. You need the Word. You need, you know, you need to do something else. Why, when, you, when, when you're in that spirit and you're in that anointing, why do we need to move on? Who told us we needed to move on? I can't tell you how many times. Well, I had, uh, back when this one guy was coming, he don't come no more because he couldn't change me. But he kept saying, Brother Martin, if you just wouldn't say that, you know, if you just wouldn't do this. And one of the things he didn't like is because we, we do like y'all do, we sing in the spirit, you know. And... He says that when we sing in the Spirit, then uh, the people that doesn't do it is bored. <laughs> I, I said, well, they ought to get filled with the Spirit and they can do it. That's right. We're not, Let them stay bored. <laughs> we, don't, we don't count nobody out. We're not saying that we're an elite group. I mean, no, I think we are. <laughs> can you say praise the Lord? Praise but Lord. whosoever will, whosoever wants to be a part of this can be a part of it. Yes. Amen. Because God has ordained it so. When he, when he poured out His blood on Calvary, He bought the whole world. Amen. Amen. He bought us all. And everybody can be a part of it. And you know what? I don't get bored in worship. Amen. I get caught up in worship. Yes. You know? And I, I don't, there's times when I worship, I don't want to come down. Amen. Are you in Isaiah 45? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, you know, we all got things that we're going through. Um, <clears throat> you know that little, that little uh, Pomeranian dog my wife had? It got run over a couple weeks ago. It was my fault. I let it out. Thank God it wasn't one of the grandkids or something, you know. <laughs> but, um, oh, she loved that dog more than she loved me. <laughs> I love the dog too. I mean, I I I cried too, y'all. Listen to me. Uh, <laughs> I love that little dog too. She 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 was so upset over that she almost couldn't function. You know, she. I mean, well, my wife's a pretty tender person, except with everybody but me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she loves me. She's put up with me for 33 years. Praise the Lord. And there ain't nobody ever put up with me for that long before. Even my parents didn't put up with me for that long. Because I, <laughs> I left them when I was 18. <laughs> Amen. But she's put up with me all these years, and she loves me. But she was so upset over that. And you know what? I think that we can get so upset over those kind of things than, than we do if, you know, we lose a, a parent or something, you know? 
I, I, my daddy passed away a few years ago. I didn't. I don't think I shed a tear. I mean, I was hurt and crushed and all, but you know, I'm a man, so you know, you have to man up. And but here, that little dog dies, and I cry. I, I think, now, why is that? Why? You know, I don't, I don't love that dog anymore, and I love my dad. <laughs> you know, why does these things happen to me? So I'm constantly searching the scriptures and asking God all these questions. I want to know why, if I have eternal life living in me. Why am I getting older all the time? Uh -huh, come on. See, I want to know why I'm sick. I want to know why, uh, you know, at times I can't hardly lift my shoulders, I, like, especially when I worked a lot and I got to pick up logs and load them. Oh, the next few days, I, you know, <laughs> getting my shoulders up is a chore. Why is that happening to me? Well, that's true. But the Lord spoke to us a few years ago, and he said, you got to stop using age for an excuse to be sick. Absolutely. All right. Amen. Absolutely. And then he did that because I caught myself one time. This woman came up and asked to pray for her mom. And I, and I said, well, how old is she? Mm -hmm. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord speak inside of me and said, what's that got to do with anything? <laughs> you mean once you reach 80, I can't heal you no more? Does things get too hard for God because we age? You know? And, and the Lord dealt with me about looking at age and saying, well, you know, <laughs> if you're that bad off, you know, uh, you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be the way I am. I'm 61 years old. I'm supposed to be able to lift my arms and worship the Lord. Absolutely. You know, I'm supposed to be able to do that without pain. Okay, so I've, I got all of these questions out before the Lord. Before we read our scripture, let me tell you this. Um, all of us, we got, we got a, a list of petitions, probably a mile long, that we go to the Lord with all the time. Things that we need, things that we know other people need, things we pray for, things we want to see the Lord do in our lives. And I, and I had all these petitions out before the Lord. Well, I bought my first computer, Brother Dave. Bought my first computer, and I was so afraid of it, I, I didn't even want to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> and besides that, I didn't know how to do anything with it. But I had bought a Bible program. And I had some men from the church, I had about two or three, two men from the church and my son come over and try to install that program into that computer. And all three of them said, I bought the wrong program, it won't go in that computer. Well, I bought it at a flea market, so I can't take it back. Okay? And all three of them said, it's not compatible, is that the word you use? Yeah. With the computer. Yeah. Well, I usually get up early. I'm an early riser. But this one Saturday, I slept in late, and while I was sleeping, I dreamed and saw myself putting that program in that computer. I got up out of bed, and I'm computer ignorant, scared to turn the thing on. I got up, went in there, and put that program in that computer. And when I'd done it, I sat back in my chair and folded my arms and said, now look at that. I got far more important stuff before the Lord than putting that program in that computer. In fact, I don't even recall asking him to show me how to do that. But he did that. And I'm wondering, why? Why? With all these things I got before the Lord, why can I dream about, you know, how to make everybody happy? <laughs> you know, why can't I dream about getting people healed? And, and something I need to do that, you know, will help our, our, our sales and our congregations and, and stuff like that. But he, I dreamed how to put that program in that computer. Now, that's not the only time that happened. I had bidded this job one time. This tree went out way over this house. And I, I bidded it so cheap I could not afford to, to, to rent a crane to take the tree down. And we had already started taking it down and we have already knocked a hole in the woman's roof. <laughs> and, and we hadn't even got to the hard part yet. <laughs> and I'm thinking, gosh, how am I going to do this? I don't even have enough money on it to rent the crane because now I know I need a crane. I dreamed it one, that one night. That night I dreamed how to take that tree down. The next day, instead of letting the man I hired to do that go up there, I put the gear on and went up that tree and took that tree down just like that. And it came right to the ground. Why? Yeah, but why when we got much more important? I mean, that was pretty important. <laughs> okay, I didn't want to tear up that guy's house no more. But, but the Lord shows us these things in these dreams. 
And we got all these petitions before him that we never seem to get answers to. Does that make any sense? Are I want to talk to the right people? Well, I was talking to the Lord about all this stuff one time because, you know, I, I need some understanding. I need some wisdom in these areas. I want to understand, okay, Lord, how come you just seem to completely ignore a lot of the stuff that I talk to you about? Is that the way he seems with y'all sometimes? I know that he cares about me. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I, people get aggravated with me sometimes, but I know that I'm the apple of his eye. <laughs> I'm the lily of his valley. He chose me. Yes. When he could have chose somebody else, he chose me. Yeah, now, he chose you too. Yes. I'm not being arrogant. <laughs> I'm speaking in faith. Amen. You know, King David said it. You know, when um, David was um, testifying about the Lord choosing him, he said, of all my father's house, talking about all his brethren, because you remember that when Samuel went to his father's house, he stood before each of his brethren. And David said, of all my father's house, he liked me. <laughs> he liked me. That's the, word, that's the way it's really in the King James Bible. He says, God liked me. It, and it's not that he didn't like the others. He just didn't call the others. He was not the one chosen. But David was the one chosen. And he said, of all my father's house, it was me. You know? The least. The least of all of them. You know, in, in, my, in my father's house, I had the least education. I was the most rowdy and the most rebellious. You know, I left home earlier than anybody else did and got off on my own and, you know, and I bummed around for years, you know. But uh, God chose me. You know what? I didn't even have nothing to do with that. No. I had absolutely nothing to do with it. I didn't ever think that one day I'm going to give my life to God and I'm going to become a son of God. I didn't know you could be a son of God. Okay, look at this in Isaiah 45. We won't read it this time, though. <clears throat> Let me stand up here like this. You can see me. <laughs> chapter, chapter 45, verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and His Maker, ask me of things to come. Yes. Ask of things to come. Now, when I ask of things to come, how do I ask? Do I ask, Lord, is all this trouble going to come on the world? You know, because listen, we, we, I, I, don't, I don't see doomsday. Now, I had a preacher here a few months ago, and because I preach life and immortality. His words to me was, you give people false hope. I said, what do you mean I give people false hope? When you tell them that they can live and not die, I'm giving them false hope. I said, that's what Jesus did. First Thessalonians chapter 1. Jesus Christ, He brought life and immortality to light. Yes, he did. That means He made it available for us. You can see it. Amen. Amen. I, hey, I know everybody's not walking in. In fact, I don't know anybody that's walking in the fullness of it. Amen. But that does not mean it's not available. Amen. Just, just before I left on my trip, in fact, it was the Sunday night before I left, this man and woman came over to the church, and, and he's a minister, and they hadn't been there in probably years. Take them out to dinner after that. <laughs> and they jumped on me about being a never die preacher. And I asked them, I said, listen, don't you believe yourself that Jesus could come any moment and you won't have to die? And they said, yeah. I said, well, there you go. Just because I grab a hold of something, you see, I know that there's a, there's, there's another way rather than going to a graveyard. Amen. You see, I choose to believe in a different way. Yes. I choose to believe that I am part of a generation of people that will not have the taste of death because Jesus Christ has already tasted of it for us. And they quote the scripture. It's appointed unto man wants to die. And I say, yeah, and he died. Amen. The man died. The man died. We died with him. <laughs> Amen. And he tasted death for every man. Therefore, I believe that I should live. Yes. I, believe, I, I do not believe that my hair should be gray. Scientists would tell us that there's not a cell in our body over 11 years old. Right? Amen. 
every cell in their body is 7 to 11 years old. Correct. Amen. They renew their cells every 7 to 11 years. Yes. Why do I look 61? There's not a cell in here that's not, not over 11. Why do I look 61? I have these questions. And then the Lord says, well, ask to me things to come. Well, that's what I'm doing. Right? I want to know the answer to these things. Because is there anything that I can do about it? Yeah, you don't want to listen. <clears throat> yeah I, I'm, I believe I can live. Mm -hmm. does, does believing I can live means that I look down my nose at people that go by the way of the grave? No. 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 Because unless the Lord reveals something else, I'll have my turn. I don't want my turn, but I'll have my turn. Okay, now listen to this. He says, ask of me things to come. Now who's asking? Who told us to do that? The Lord. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. It ought to be in red. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and His Maker, ask me of things to come. And you know what? We got a long list of things we're wanting to know about. Lord, how can I walk perfect and upright before you? I like to think I'm holy. Because Jesus said, be ye holy. Because I'm holy. Right? And Paul says, without holiness, no man can see the Lord. And I want to be holy. <laughs> Amen. And I want to walk perfect and upright before God. But people step on my toes. And I find out I'm not as holy as I want to be. Oh, I'm real holy. As long as people pat me on the back and telling me how pretty I am. Real holy. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Praise God. You know, as long as you pat me on the back, I'm your best friend. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody don't pat you on the back in fact they tell you you want them never die preacher you're giving people false hope you know and <laughs> I don't think I give people false hope I tell them what's available yes. you know anyway the woman was talking to me and then we got to talking about brother Charles who was my mentor for years and, and he too was a never die preacher and he said and he's already gone on to be with the Lord. And, and his wife made the statement, so, well, Brother Charles believed that, and he died. That's true. He didn't believe he would have to die. I said, well, that's what he said. And I told her, I said, you heard the word that he said, but you did not know his teaching on it. See? That's what, the people hear just a, a one sentence, and then they cut off everything else you say. Because, see, my teaching is, if Jesus tarries then I probably will. I don't want to, but I probably will. But I see a little glimpse of hope. Just a, just a glimpse of it. I have, the only example I got is Jesus. You know, I got, I got just that little glimpse of hope that things could change. And I choose to grab a hold of that. Amen. You see, I choose to hang on to that and to preach life instead of preach death. I choose to preach life, and I choose to try to in incorporate it into my life. My wife and I, we had been born again about six months. And, um, of course, we was in a denominational church that didn't teach anything because they don't know nothing. It was part of the whole system. They wanted you to go to church and be a good church member, and that's what we were. Okay? But my wife and I got together one Saturday because we saw how just going to church was changing our lives. And we sat down with our Bibles and we were in our bedroom and, and we started talking about, well, you know, honey, I, I can't go fishing on Sunday morning anymore. And, you know, we had all these issues and, and stuff, you know. And, and not only that, they're getting part of our income. And, and you know how, <laughs> I mean, you know, and we're talking about these things. And then we made a decision, her and I. That this is the life that we wanted to live. Yes. We decided that this is the way we wanted to go. Yes. Now, please understand, I'm not patting us on the back, but since we've made that decision, we have not gone back. We're not in church this week and out next week. We're steadfast in what we've decided to do. And we know nothing at that time about the Lord. We didn't even know. That if you surround yourself with the Word of God, and that faith comes from the Word and you'll get faith. 
You know, one day I just went home and I said, Honey, you know what we ought to do? We ought to just surround ourselves with the Word of God. And we did. We quit watching TV, you know. I mean, we watch TV now, but there was a, a period of time there we didn't watch TV, we didn't read the newspaper or any fishing magazines or, or anything. We spent our time with the Word. We, we bought the cassette disc, you know, with the, with the Word of God on and played it all night long. We still do that, only now it's on CD. And so, I mean, we just, we just did that all the time, and we still do things like that. We purpose in our heart that we're going to surround ourselves with this Word. And you know what? Then we found a scripture one day that says, Faith cometh by hearing the Word. So, yeah, I got faith to grab a hold of that little chance. It might just be just a little chance that things could change in my lifetime. You see? That things could change. That there is a people who can put on immortality... And can be the stars that is shining in this night that we're living in. There's just a chance of just, just maybe it is a little chance. Well, certainly. You've already passed but listen, when Elijah had told Ahab he better get home, there's coming an abundance of rain. He went down to the seaside and sat down, and sent his servant and said, "Well, you go over there and see if you see anything." So he came back and said, "I don't see nothing." He did that seven times. Servant came back and said, well, there's a little cloud about the size of a man's hand. In the, in the, in the midst of heaven, how big? You probably couldn't even see a cloud the size of a man's hand. <laughs> but he did. And that was just enough. Wasn't it? Yep, it was enough. Elijah got up. So you better get out of here. It's going to rain. It's coming in abundance of rain. That was, all you needed was just that little, just the size of a man's hand. You know, just the size of a man's hand in the whole, in the midst of heaven. That ain't nothing. <coughs> but you saw it, and he said, it's coming. And so I see a glimpse of immortality. I see a chance of it in my lifetime. And I chose, and my wife and I had chose together, we're going to grab a hold of it. Amen. People want to fight it. Let me ask you, why would anybody defend death? Why? Why would anybody defend it? But people do. By the way, the brother that uh, was, came to the church and was talking to me about being giving people false hope and stuff about living, uh, he doesn't speak in tongues every day. When he preaches, because I've heard him preach quite a bit, he always refers back to the day that he did. He says, I can remember the day when I got filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues. Well, I did it just this morning while we were worshiping. I do it every day of my life. Amen. You know, I, I do it all the time because I, I believe there's life in that. Yes. It's, the, it's the expression of the Spirit coming out of me. And the Spirit, and the, the, you know, the, the Scripture teaches us that the Spirit will always make intercession for us according to the will of God. Yes. Amen. And so the Spirit is coming out of me and is praying and interceding. Amen. And not, not just for me. When we're in this service together, that Spirit is interceding for each and every one of us. Amen. And for all. Amen. Yes. It's interceding because it wants us to come on in to the fullness of what God has. And I know it's possible. Because the Scripture says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. But all things are possible if you can believe. Yes. And who, who has the right to stand up in front of us and, and quench our faith in something that God has shown us? Amen. Even if it is just a little glimpse of immortality. Who has the right that says, you, you can't believe that? You can't do that? Well, there's many adversaries. Okay, if we read the rest of the scripture, he says, ask to me about things to come. And then he says, concerning my sons. Concerning my sons. Now, let me tell you something. When he, when he said concerning my sons, that brought it down to a, a smaller group of people. Yes. Did you know that? Because the scripture says that those that's led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons. Not everybody's the sons. Now, everybody's been begotten of God. Amen? And like we were singing this morning, someday, you know, every knee will bow. I believe that with all my heart. I know that Jesus died for every man. 
Amen? But that don't mean everybody's a son because those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So when he said concerning my sons, he brought it down to a smaller group of people because I think we've learned through the Scriptures that you cannot enter into this by yourself. I need, I need Brother Chuck here and Brother Lockmiller to encourage me in my little glimpse of immortality that I see. I see just a possibility that I could change, that I can do something that other people hasn't done in past generations. What did Paul say? Paul says, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, right? Well, at the same time, in the fullness of time, God is revealing all these things to us, his people. Yes. And he's saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Amen. You know, Amen. this is the way. This is the way to do it. All you need is just a little glimpse. Amen. You just, you know, if you could forget about doctrine for just a minute and think about what you see, your vision. <clears throat> think about your vision. If you have a vision of death and of sickness and of need all the time. Now, I've got needs. You know, I'm, I'm going through some things in my body too. You know, me and... Dr. McMicken, he's, he's been our family doctor for over 30 years. You know, him and I got into it in his office just a few <laughs> weeks ago. And, and he, he's just like everybody else. He said, well, you're not as young as you used to be. You know, well, you know, that's true. You know, but he, so he wanted to put me on this, these chemicals, these drugs Make that, that was going to help Make my condition. And I said, no, no, I'm not taking them. You know? And I know what he's thinking. He's thinking, well, if you ain't going to do nothing, why you come here? I came to you because I wanted to know what was wrong. Hey, by the time he got done running all his tests, that cost me 600 bucks. I didn't have insurance then. Uh -huh. I had to come right out of my pocket to find out what was going on with me. You were blessed. It cost me $1,000 after insurance. After insurance. <laughs> 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 well, anyway, it cost me six hundred dollars to find out what it was, and I so I've been trying to repair the thing naturally. You know, been using natural stuff without letting them put me on chemicals. Because my wife would tell you, I don't even like taking Tylenol. I put up with the pain in my shoulders before I. But of course, if they get real bad, I'm not against taking it. I will take it, but I fight it for as long as I can. I don't want to become dependent. I know my daddy, bless his heart, he was wounded five times in World War II, and he, he was ate up with, um, what do you call that stuff? Arthritis. And so, I mean, when he bought his, uh, it was at Sedron, I think it was. He didn't buy a little bottle of that. He bought that big bottle. You know, and he ate the stuff like candy. <clears throat> you know, because he hurt all the time. You know, I don't want to be dependent on those kind of things. Amen. I'm dependent on the Lord. Amen. You know? And I know that when I go to work, especially if I have to use... I got a chainsaw, y'all, that's almost as long as I am tall. And when you come up with that thing, you don't stop up here in the middle of the air like that. You come up and put it up there where you want it <laughs> and get it cutting so the tree can help you hold it. And I know that any time I use that saw, my shoulders is going to hurt. You know? Now, 10 years ago, that didn't happen. You know, 10 years ago, I could hold it up here like this and just rev it up and ease it up to the tree. I can't do that no more. Somebody say, well, you're getting older. Well, that's, that's true. Okay? But I know in a couple of days I'll get over that. I can lift my arms again. Amen. Right? People say, well, your rotary cups is wearing out. God can restore that. Yes. <laughs> okay? God, is, God created this thing. God created this, therefore he's able to repair this. So God says, okay, you asked me things concerning my son. He brought it down to a, a smaller group of people. And, our, and our, our major concern is, how can I help the sons grow? How can I bring the sons of God on into maturity? You know, what can I do? What can I say that might help them? You know, I give them hope. Right? Can you have too much hope? No. no. Scripture says, hope maketh not a shame. Hope maketh not a shame. How can you have too much hope? It's like having too much faith. Or like the song says, having too much fun. <laughs> 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 Amen. How can you have too much of it? 
Have you ever heard God say, you need to stop reading the Word. You've got too much faith. No, in fact, you know what it says on the book of Isaiah? You get out the book and you read. You know those nights when you can't sleep? Instead of going in there and turning on the television, why don't you get out the book and read? That's what, that's what he said to do in Isaiah. Get out the book and read. You know, there was a king back in the Old Testament, uh, you know, in Esther, uh, and he couldn't sleep. And so he had the, the people, he says, bring that book of remembrance before me. And he started remembering, writing, you know, reading all the things that he'd done, and he found out how Mordecai had saved his life. And he says, what, whatever got done for him for doing that? They said, nothing. But he didn't just sit there and do nothing. He got out the book. See, we got these examples of things that we can do to help ourselves, but we don't want to do it. It's a lot easier to sit there and watch TV and wonder, how come I can't get to sleep? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I like watching television. But I'd rather be in a service like we had here this morning when I felt the Spirit of God so strong that the hair on your head... And one time I turned around, I thought somebody was standing behind me. I felt the hair on my head move, and I looked back, I thought somebody was doing something behind me there. And there wasn't nobody. I mean, it was, that was a powerful anointing in this place this morning. And I know that in that anointing, you know, maybe, maybe you don't do nothing, but just sit there and enjoy it. But you know what it's doing to you? It's bringing life. What if you went the whole two hours? I don't know how long the service is left, but what if you went the whole two hours in that? I could have sat right back there and be just as blessed. You know? Because I know Brother Chuck's heart. I know he'd rather have the moving of the Holy Ghost than to hear all this stuff I'm saying. <laughs> Amen? Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, things begin to happen. And I tell you what, I tell our people all the time, our worship service is not to give the latecomers time to get to church. No, no sir. Our whole worship service is geared to get that spirit to move like that. Yes. And here it was. As soon as y'all struck up the guitars, boy, phew. Yeah, Sometimes you have to work at it. That was God because I couldn't hardly sing. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we might have to work at it. But hey, when it's like it was this morning... God, everyone ought to just lift their hands and, oh, and just enjoy the time of it. You know, and don't be afraid to say, I'm yours, Jesus. Amen. I'm yours. I'm yours, Jesus. You bought me. You created me. You bought me. I'm yours. I'm yours, Jesus. Yes. You know, it don't sound very macho. But hey, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Amen. Amen. Recognize when God is in the room. Yes. And then just stay in it. Get mad at Brother Chuck if he cuts it short. <laughs> Isn't that right? Because we want, the most important thing is to have that spirit moving around us. To where you feel it behind you and look back to see who's back there. And there ain't nobody back there. I thought maybe they, somebody turned a fan on or something. There wasn't no fan. Where did it come from? Why did I feel something? It's the spirit of the Lord. Bringing the stars, the sons of God into a place where he can truly bless them. Because God, God's desire is for you to prosper and be in health. He wants every one of us to prosper and be in health. He wants us to get beyond the things that we've heard and the things that we've seen. Paul told the church at Corinth, he says, I want to preach things beyond you. I want to preach in the regions beyond you. You know, he might have been talking. He probably was going on past into other countries. But how about just deeper things than we've heard before? Getting past the little Pentecost. Amen. <clears throat> Pentecost has had its time. Now it's time for the kingdom to rise up. And we're going to rule. Pentecost failed. The kingdom won't fall. Amen. The kingdom won't fall. They turned Pentecost into a religion. Yep, they did. And the kingdom of God is not religion. Amen. I can't have joy when I'm hurt. It's not, and it's not right. <laughs> well, yeah, it's tough. <clears throat> I can be a lot more joyful. And you know what? I've heard there was this woman, and, and she was a musician, but, and I think she used to play with Patsy Cline or something. But anyway, she was in an automobile accident, 
And so she would sit in her wheelchair and she would play the guitar and she would talk how much, about how much glory God got out of her being in that wheelchair. Well, I'm a little funny because I'm thinking he'd get a lot more glory if you got out of that wheelchair. And I appreciate the fact that she's singing and worshiping God in her wheelchair, but I know God can do more. <laughs> you believe God can do more? Amen. Can you, can you see just a little glimpse of immortality that's available? We've seen it for a long time. Well, amen. Then let's believe it. And don't worry about those that think you're giving people false hope. What false hope? Why is it that people think life is going to continue on and continue on and continue on? Peter called them people scoffers. They said all things continue as in the days of our fathers, which they were talking about men are born, men die. Men are born, men die. They're making fun of immortality. That we cannot let what the people of the world or even the religious system think of us. That's a whole system that is coming down. Amen. 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 We're are the stars. We are the sons of God. We're the ones that God is revealing these deeper things to. And it's not that they can't have it. They can have it. They will have it. Can I say that? They will have it. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> Can you say praise the Lord? But hey, God, is, God has got you and I, and we're shining in this darkness. We, Paul, Paul said that um, he heard things that was unspeakable. That simply means that he, he began to say things that it was not lawful according to the law to say. You remember the story about Lucifer? He said, I'm going to be like the Most High God. And it doomed him. You and I can say that, and it gives us life. Yes. We're saying things that is not lawful to say. Like, I, I'm not going to die. Well, you hear that statement, and you think, well, you're arrogant. No, I'm saying it in faith, and believe me, it takes all the faith I can muster to say that. Right? Because I know how people think. <laughs> Amen? So it's not an arrogant thought. It's just a little glimpse of hope that I have. Because, you see, confession is made unto salvation. If I don't confess it, how would it ever come to pass in my life? Amen. Yeah, we're, we're weird people. Paul says another way, he says that, we're, that we preach unsearchable things. Yes. I looked up the word unsearchable. It meant there's no way to prove it and no way to find it out. Unless God reveals it, right. you will not see it. Not see it. I mean, even God himself, unless God reveals himself, how are you going to prove to the world he even exists? Exactly right. it's, un, it's unprovable. You know, scientists says we... Came from a ward on a frog or something. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and we preach creation. I believe I was created to be like God. Yes. Amen. Created. Destined. Destined to be in His likeness and in His image. Because God. Oh. You know? Even my own, in my immediate family, my own brothers and sisters, who have far more education than I have. Amen. They don't see the things that I preach. My brother, my brother told me one time, he says, you have, a, you have an insight into them Old Testament scriptures, don't you? Well, I, I, I can quote to him. I say, well, Paul said he didn't preach nothing that weren't written in the Old Testament. Right. Amen. You know? Yeah, I, I go back to the Old Testament. And I read the Old Testament because I'm looking for something else that will help me to conform to the image of God. That will help me in, in what I think the Lord is showing me. I, there's still one man in our church and he's been faithful been with me over 20 years but he's, he still believes in the rapture and you know and <laughs> you know it hadn't happened you know back in 88 they, this guy said you know 88 reasons why Jesus is going to come in 88 well Jesus was here in 88 yes he was they just didn't know it but nothing changed and then here came 2000 along. Y2K. And everybody was all worried. That was going to be the end of the world. And by the way, last December 21st was supposed to be the end of the world too. That's right. We never heard a word about that, it. Nothing ever happened. Came and said nothing. <laughs> everybody forgot about the Mayan calendar all of a sudden. <laughs> Amen. 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, they said all these times, and, and, and you know, that's one time when Y2K, I know a woman personally that hired somebody to build her an outhouse. She said, uh, you ain't going to have no way to flush your toilets. You're going to, you know, and, and this guy went out there and built her an outhouse on her property. And Y2K came, what happened? Here we are. Except for she's got an outhouse. She's got an outhouse. <laughs> and it's still there, too. Well, actually, she passed away just, just a few months ago. I like them things when I, when I had them. <laughs> Amen. Us truck drivers still but listen. We're second-class citizens. <laughs> we see this just a little glimpse of something that the Lord can do. Absolutely. And we grab a hold of it, and we hang on to it, and we minister it to ourselves, we minister it to the people around us, because we want everybody to live. Amen. Amen. Come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Let's everybody just stand and let's lift up our hands. Give the Lord a good wave offering. Come on and magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. For truly, truly, truly those that don't know will hear. And those that have no reasoning will come to an understanding. Because the Lord is working in the midst of a people <laughs> that has a mouth, that has a voice. Amen. And right in the volume of the book, it is written of us that we will come and we will do the will of the Lord. And all things are possible to us. Amen. You know, do not look in the mirror and try to determine how long you have. Look in the mirror and realize that you have eternity ahead of you. Oh, hallelujah. We cannot even begin to comprehend the things that God has in store for us. Many, many are the blessings of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we love you and we bless you. We love you and we bless you. I bless this ministry. I speak braille of this ministry this morning, Father God. And I ask you, Father God, to cause an increase in understanding. Cause an increase in revelation. Cause an increase in our faith, Lord. Oh, Father God, help us to believe that which is unseen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help us to believe. Help us to reach out in our faith and receive from the Lord that which He has prepared for us. Because all things are possible. All things are possible. Oh, hallelujah. All things are possible. Oh, if we can believe. You know, you cannot let your yesterdays or today even determine your future. God's the only one in charge of our future. And by the way, Moses didn't even start his ministry until he was 80 years old. Amen. 80 years old when he started. You know? And he didn't say, well, Lord, I'm too old. Nope. He said, Lord, I forgot how to speak. <laughs> and the Lord said, well, I'll I I send you a mouthpiece. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Give the Lord a good love offering. Hallelujah.